Swift Data Part 1, The Notion. Actually, there's no Swift Data in this episode. We're going to look at the idea of Swift Data. And the idea of Swift Data was actually clear. And to see that, let's start with storyboards. If you create a new iOS app in Xcode, you can choose as your interface storyboards. For many years, this is the way I would create my interface for iOS apps. I'd open up my storyboard and I'd drag in a UI image view and a label, and then I'd organize them in a vertical stack and I'd set my constraints. I'd get something that looked like this. And in this case, what I'm defining is a single view controller. If we look at the corresponding code, here's where we define the view controller, our instance of a UI view controller. And we're going to connect it to the image view and label by defining an IB outlet for the image view, an IB outlet for the label, and then control dragging them inside the storyboard so that that little circle fills in and tells us that this code is connected to the storyboard. We'll initialize our elements in the view did load. So for example, we'll set the image views image to be the UI image with the system name globe, and we'll set the text in the label to be hello world. And when we run our app in the simulator, this is what we'll see. And that's friendly and nice and it's easy to work with, but underneath the storyboard, underneath this nice friendly visual interface is actually all of this XML. This is how our storyboard is persisted. This is how our UI is actually defined. There's too much here, so let me get rid of a lot of it and just focus in on some key parts. Here's where we define the view controller, and notice it has an ID for the storyboard and it has a custom class. This is what ties it to the code. And a view controller manages a view, even though there's nothing about that view in the code, here's the view that is controlled by the view controller. And our view has subviews. For example, it has our image view and it has our label. And notice our label is set so that the text alignment is center. And it also contains a font description to specify that we're using the headline style. Now it turns out there's a lot of other details that I've left out of this just to make things simpler, but this is the core. Now, if I want to organize my image above my label, I have to put them inside of a stack view and notice the stack views axis is vertical. That's how they are oriented vertically. And that stack view sits inside the view as a sub view. And so the view has the stack view as its sub view and the stack view has the image view and the text as its sub views. And we can add other constraints. For example, we're going to center the image view and the text horizontally inside the stack view. As you might imagine, there's other constraints that I've left out of this. But there's one more important detail. Remember, we connected our outlets by control dragging inside the story view, and that information is stored here under connections. The image view outlet is connected to its destination, and the label outlet is connected to its destination. The big idea of Swift UI is, what if instead of using XML, instead of using this, or actually this, to specify our UI, what if we use Swift? So let's create a second iOS app, and this time use Swift UI as the interface. So we'll import Swift UI, and we'll define a struct named content view that conforms to the view protocol. And already we see some differences. If you look at the XML, our view controller was a class. And here we're using a struct. Secondly, it was a view controller, and the view controller contained a view where here in Swift UI, we're starting our work with the view. A view must have a body, and the body is where we say it contains an image with our globe, and it contains text with hello world, and I want to orient them vertically, so I use a V stack around them, and we can style our image by specifying the image scale and the foreground style, so we get the color and the size that we want. And if we run this and notice that things are too close together, we can specify that there's padding around the V stack as well. We don't have to center the V stack in our view, and we don't have to center the image and text inside the V stack. That's done for us automatically. There's some sensible defaults that SwiftUI just gives us. And when we run it, we see something similar to what we saw before in our storyboard version. And this is a really nice way to express what we want to see in the view. It's not actually what's rendered on the screen, but this is our description that is interpreted and rendered on the screen. In fact, if you look in the view debugger, you'll see that we have this as our actual view hierarchy of what we see on the screen. Here's the code that we wrote. Here's the Swift UI, but it sits inside this world, this UI kit world that has a UI window scene, a UI window, and so on. 
it still is a whole lot nicer than our XML. I prefer to express our UI like this using Swift UI, but I just wanted to make you aware that there's more going on than just this code that you're seeing. It sits in this broader world. And this brings us to Swift data. And the question is, what if we use some of the same insights for our data layer? And that's what we'll discuss next time.